This is the soul of your money. Each Sunday at sunrise, Bible-based money moves and inspiration. I'm J.B. Bryan, your host and the creator of Afroeconomics, a strategic financial management program developed for the advancement of black wealth in America and abroad. Good morning. I am J.B. Bryan, President and Chief Investment Officer at J.B. Bryan Financial Group, the home of Afroeconomics, a registered investment advisory firm. And I created Afroeconomics. And Afroeconomics at the core of it, the fifth principle of Afroeconomics is basically in the middle of this book is a financial Bible verses related to our daily financial life. The fifth principle of Afroeconomics. The symbol I use is Gianyame, our Adinkra symbol of nothing is possible without God. It all starts and ends, begins and maintains us through our relationship with God. Can I get it? Amen. That's right. Good morning to everybody hanging out with me in the webinar side. If you are not and you're watching this recording, then definitely check out afroeconomics.com, go to our events calendar, and it will share with you the opportunity for absolutely complimentary an opportunity to be empowered on Sundays at sunrise. Good morning, Dr. Ward. Good morning, Ms. Brown. Good morning, Ms. Young. Good morning, Ms. Booker. Good morning, Mr. Lewis. Good morning, Mr. Barden. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Cole. Good morning, Ms. Light Bird, Ms. Kaya, Ms. Jones, good morning. Good morning, Ms. Sweden. Good morning, Ms. Spite. I didn't forget about you. Good morning. And I don't get to say good morning to those who are on the telephone. You also have the option of logging in to the telephone. But good morning to all of you on the telephone. And good morning to all of you on the Facebook Afro Economics with J.B. Bryan almost 8,000 strong, uh, we appreciate you too. But I love it when you come into the webinar side because the webinar side allows me to see that Mr. Robinson just logged in. Good morning to you. Good morning, Wanda. Yes, it is going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. Ms. Barnes, all the way from South Carolina. Good morning, sister. I know you got some stuff cooking. She can cook. Hope you'll come to the Black Health, Black Wealth. Make your way, everybody, to Virginia. We have people logged in throughout the country. Thank God for that, the opportunity to be touching lives like that. There's a couple of hotels right next to the convention center for the event that is next Saturday. So let's make sure that we do that. Get that set up. Call the office if you need help with anything. We're going to have a day party next Saturday to celebrate the goodness of God. So let's talk. Today we're talking about breaking every chain, breaking bad habits, building new good habits. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 24, it says, Put off your old self, be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Put on the new self created in the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. We were made new through our mental and spiritual relationship with God. No matter how much somebody else remembers what your bad habit was, God sees the new you, the new us. He sees us in our strength. I was thinking about for some reason, the bad habit that I had of every night I had to have ice cream before I went to sleep. My daughter was real young. I would put her to bed. And, you know, of course, I went to went through a divorce so early in her life, you know, so that divorce, like ice cream became like my husband. So I would go down, sneak down like I was like I was sneaking. I, I don't know. Maybe because I know she's a light sleeper. 
especially if I was headed towards the kitchen and she'd be like, mom, what you doing? You know, so I sneak down to get the ice cream and I would just like finish almost a half gallon every night, not to mention the fact that I'm lactose intolerant or I can do ice cream sometimes. That was the sneaky part about it. Seemed like I never got sick with eating ice cream and going to sleep. I wasn't, to me, getting sick on my stomach. I just sleep on it, you know, just enjoy it. But I just kept gaining weight and gaining weight and gaining weight. And I love exercise, so I go to the gym every day and I still eat my ice cream at night. Things didn't change for me until I changed my mind that I did not need to have my ice cream husband every night. <laughs> and he, and he, look, my ice cream husband had to go. We had to go through a divorce. But it was indeed too long a process because I really didn't replace it with anything soon enough. I didn't replace it with my relationship with God soon enough. Because you can switch from ice cream and you can switch over, which I did, to just almond milk or cashew milk, sugar. But it's still sugar. It's still not righteousness. It's still not the holy habit that I deserve to just go to bed like I do now. I don't have to eat the sugar, sit there and let it marinate in my system it hurt me in ways I would never imagine if I had continued to do that. So breaking bad habits, like what's a habit? So a habit is a regular practice wired deep into our brains. It is often hard to give up. Habits can be good for us or bad, unhealthy tendencies that habitage even our financial goals. If I had continued to do that, it would have sabotaged my health goals and my financial goals. It was already sabotaging my health goals because I wanted to be my healthiest, best stuff. So I was getting acne, you know, I was getting sinus issues, I would get colds every year, you know, and then thank God that doesn't happen. The difference in the life by getting out of those bad habits, if your bad habit is something that you eat, because I felt like, well, I don't drink and I don't smoke, so I could just do this. No, a bad habit is a bad habit. You can't set up like what, what is, you know, that your bad habit is better than someone else's bad habit. No, your body doesn't see it that way. Your spiritual mind doesn't see it that way. A habit that is hurting and sabotaging you in some negative or your, even those you love. You might think that it doesn't matter. My habit doesn't matter. But think about like secondhand smoke, how it hurts those you love because they want to be near you. They want to be close to you and you're blowing it on them. So let's look at some key ways to build our healthy habits to replace the bad habits or key ways that we can get rid of bad habits. So give us the strength because I believe that the key to breaking bad habits is self control. I had to establish self control. I had, you have the key to self control for me was to meditate on positive word, to meditate on scriptures, dealing with self control, to put what you study like because so many people will get up this morning, go to church, and never practice. But, but faith, your faith, our faith, our confidence in God, it's, it, without work, is dead. We have to put in that work. We have to put it in. I was interviewed on a radio station, and we were discussing about the 40 acres and a mule. And I, was, I said, like, we, the, the, the reason that we wanted and deserve the 40 acres and a mule because we wanted to have an opportunity to work and produce wealth and income for generations and generations and generations that were missed out because we were robbed of that opportunity to work our own land. Faith without works is dead. Be encouraged by the empowering Bible scriptures that teach us 
the importance of gaining self-control over our lives, right? So that's why I'm just incorporating scriptures that stood out to me. Like in James chapter five, verse 14, it tells us to pray for improvement. So let's, I would like to just meditate or pray on Psalms 46, verse one through four. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will we not fear though the earth may be moved? And though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof rage and swell, and though the mountains shake at the tempest of the same, there is a river. The streams thereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. There I see it saying that no matter what, no matter what, God has to be our hope and our strength. We were talking about fasting in a meeting that we were having about black health and black wealth. And I do an intermittent fasting where I have, a, there, we have a member of Afro economics who she does 72 hours of fasting consistently over and over and over. She only eats once in every 72 hours. That is truly connected to, she says, to her relationship with God. That is a spiritual decision that she has made. And she says that only through prayer can she make that work. Now, I know when I started intermittent fasting, I knew that I was going to have to depend on God to get through it because there were times where I would be like, you know, because I work out every morning. She doesn't exercise as much as I do. And you know, the true fasting probably isn't made for like long term like that. I could not do my daily exercise um, if I were fasting for 72 hours. My trainer would send me home because <laughs> that would be pitiful. But I definitely feel it. I feel it that the need to really go into my spiritual self-control, my relationship with God, because when you want to make that work, when you want to develop your self-control, when you want to develop your discipline and get past a, um, a past something that you feel that was weakening you, you're going to have to pray, in my opinion. I have to lean on God. I have to lean on God because he's stronger than me. My relationship with God is stronger than anything in the world. My, my relationship with God has to be stronger, and it is stronger than my relationship with that old ice cream that wasn't good for me. Your relationship with God has to supersede that relationship with the mall where people go, I need some retail therapy. You know? Well, you're not... You're, the, the fact that you're doing it, you're not hiding it from anybody. That people will go to the mall, buy things, and then take it home and put it, hide it in the back of the closet. You know, that's, you're not hiding in anything. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, it says, whoever conceals his trans transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. So it's like, you're not going to prosper by relying on things, buying things to make you feel better about self. Like it's just, it's, it's biblical. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes. See, that's where that work comes in. Forsakes them will obtain mercy. Things will get better. But we first have to accept that I can't do this. I cannot have this retail credit cards. I cannot continue to add to that. I cannot accept that that's what I have to do on every Friday because that makes me feel better temporarily, right? We have to get past whatever that habit is or uh, going to the bar when your wife says, I wish that you would come home on Fridays because I would like to take the kids to a drive-in movie sometime, but you keep continuing to go to the bar every Friday and not spending time with the kids. You know, you, you can't, no matter how far that bar is from your home, you can't conceal that transgression. It still comes back until you say, I am wrong. 
I, I, do, I need to do this. We have to reach some sort of compromise. I understand that I need to relax, but I have to figure out a more positive way to relax so that I don't ruin my family. These are just thoughts, things, I don't know, it might be relevant to someone, definitely. So think it through. Do not be conformed. This is Romans chapter 12, verse two. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that the will, you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That's the will of God. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is so powerful. Romans chapter 12, oh my goodness. How many times I have had to do, use that. And you know, like with your kids, when they say everybody is doing so and so, I mean, we have to help them and realize, okay, that's what the world is doing. But let's do this. That's going to build you up. These are the only ways that we're going to pull them away from what to the world has become um, acceptable. Like, you know, all these young people who are vaping and then they're, they, they feel that it's okay because the world has told them it's okay. And that's where we have to allow God to step in and let them know the truth of the matter is it's not okay. It will harm you. It's burning people's lungs. It's tearing them down. It's not a good habit. It is not building you up. It is not developing your relationship and allowing you to live God's purpose for your life. You know, we have to. We, we, have, to, we have to, you know, not be conformed to this world, bottom line. A second point I have is if you want to break a bad habit, List all of the negative things that this bad habit is causing in your life and imagine, imagine what your life would be like without those bad habits in your life. Know your power. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. The spirit that God gave us is not about being timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. But the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. It's not okay to be out of control. It's not okay. Girl, have a good time. No. Power, love, and self-discipline. Now, a lot of times, because of the bad habit, you're not expressing any of those things. You look weak, you're hurting somebody's feelings, and you don't have any self-control. You're just done. So the fact that we can meditate on that God gives us a, a, a spirit of power and self-discipline and love is enough for me. That can help me through. I don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Know your power that comes from God. Oh, and, and people say things. Remember, last time we were together, I was talking about our I, I, the I am statement. We go, I'm so weak. I hear that way too often. I know I shouldn't, but what, that's your I am statement. I'm weak. So that's why you're doing it. You got to rebuke that. A third point, list the people that you're hurting by doing that bad habit. God not only warns us about the damage that we do to ourselves through these bad habits, but the Bible also warns us of how our good and bad choices negatively or positively affect the people around us. Make sure you're aware of that. My fourth point is to know your weakness and get rid of them. Know your weakness. 
Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of of malice. Ephesians chapter four, verse 31. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Lord knows that is hard. All. They said all. Woo. All is a big word. Get rid of all. I want that. I want that, God. I want all bitterness, all rage, all rank, all anger, all rage. Any I want all of that gone out of my life. And it'll be like something will happen and you get mad again. You know, oh, and it'll tick it up again. Uh, take it up again. I want to get to the point where I can just catch that. No matter who it is, no matter who it impacts, I want to be able to catch that. I remember my daughter's school was constantly getting to her. Constantly. And then I had to start realizing that they could care less. They could care less. They, you know, I realized the entire unfortunate, most of the people in the school system really could care less about my particular child and how well she did or what she accomplished or what she learned during her time there. It was just doing a job. No matter what the emails were, no matter how much evidence I could support that this instructor fell short, didn't do, I was becoming more bitter and more bitter and more angry and angry and considering taking her out and doing homeschool and all this. I mean, I was mad going on Facebook, expressing all this anger, rage, that they were hurting and disappointing me and not looking out for my child, you know, and then I I warned them about the things that were going on and it came to pass. But when it came to pass and all of what they were doing hit them in the face of the racism that they were expressing and the things that I told them we need to do to address, to make things better for these students, of every color, they need to know right and wrong and learn about how they should be speaking and handling one another, you know? And then, and then I just said, I have got to have peace and I'm gonna focus on, I'm gonna focus on mine. I'm gonna focus on making sure that she's not bitter, that she doesn't have rage, that she doesn't have anger. So when she would come in and tell me what they did, I said, feel sorry for them. Isn't that pitiful? Well, mama, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that wrong? Isn't that racist? You know, well, let's look at it this way. That's not your problem and they cannot harm you. You are completely protected. There's nothing that they can do. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. So much more power was there and kept her heart pure than for me to continue to fight with them about something they refused to accept and see and change. I had to make sure that I changed us. I had to make sure that I built her strong, that I made her good, that I kept her heart right, that I kept her prayed up. And it is a constant struggle to reflect and to be a positive mirror for our own families. But we got to get rid of it. Get rid of it. So whatever. And we don't even think of bitterness and rage and of fussing and speaking bad about other people, and everything as as a bad habit, but it is. It's a weakness. But we have to folks and first accept that we want to change it. Some people like just like that. So we do it, and we know that it's wrong. That's the first step, right? Accepting it, repenting. I shouldn't allow this to get to me. There's a verse that says, "They conquer they whom they first anger." You know, you can't conquer me until you break me and weaken me by being angry because then I'm not thinking. Let's continue to think. Let's continue to focus on God's purpose for our life, the strength that we will gain from the self-control and the discipline of putting our energy and moving out of the situation. My energy isn't making progress and moving forward because unfortunately that will be there, but I got to get her through. I got to get me through. A fifth point is prayerfully make a spiritual and practical plan on how you will break this bad habit. Make a spiritual plan. 
make a practical do plan, right? In Proverbs chapter 12, verse one, it says to learn, you must, to learn, you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. We have to first love that, oh, wow, this, this is, that's right. I was wrong, right? First, you must first love the fact that I have to become disciplined, that I have to, that I had to go to bed last night so I can be here at 7 a.m. talking to you about these positive things of breaking bad habits. We have to love discipline in order to learn and to build up. It is stupid to hate correction. I love that it's stupid. It's stupid, stupid, stupid. Yes, it is stupid to hate correction. You say, oh, don't use that word stupid. Is there? And number six, when you really study the Bible, it is clear that God expects us to use both spiritual and practical solutions to replace a bad habit with a good habit. Right? In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but it's painful. It says no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Everything that we do that requires discipline the word promises will later on produce a harvest of righteousness. Like in a relationship, being faithful. It takes discipline over the years to lead to those times of peace. Like I see people on social media and they go, things ain't been good for us always. They really don't need to say that. <laughs> it's been up and it's been down. Really doesn't matter how many of your cousins know y'all were separated for 10 years. It doesn't matter that the discipline that you have exercised, even during the lack of the times, the fact that you got back on track, you know, that and it was hard to exercise that discipline, whatever, God's not judging you because you've reached that point of harvest and peace, right? Because you were trained by your discipline. And when you win, you ignite, you deserve that. You deserve the celebration. He said to her, she said that it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Our relationship with God helps us be disciplined. A positive, practical, spiritual relationship with God. And then finally, I want to share just in closing, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And that's from Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, and Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 31. I want to also share, may life grant us wellness of body, spirit, and mind. Let's be bold and let's break every chain. Soul of Your Money, heard each Sunday at sunrise, Bible-based money moves and inspiration. I'm J.B. Ryan, the creator of Afroeconomics, a strategic financial management program developed for the advancement of black wealth in America and abroad. Check out Afroeconomics 
on your favorite social media platforms. You will find us everywhere. Plus, enjoy my weekly Afroeconomics podcast. Powered by J.B. Bryan Financial Group Incorporated, a registered investment advisory firm. Hashtag Afroeconomics.